Where is this, and how did I end up here? Y'all sit back, and I'll tell you the story. I made it clear in episode one when I was in McDowell County, West Virginia, exploring the Appalachian Holler, but my roots go deep in these mountains. That's actually what's got me crisscrossing hollers and hills and mountains and streams today, is to get to the next county and actually next state over. And ultimately, back to that hell house and a coal mining ghost town in a place where my grandfather well, we called him Pawpaw, worked for decades with a coal mine in the Jewel Valley of Buchanan County, Virginia. As I crisscross Appalachia, I wonder about all the tiny place names and towns littered across the map. How did these places get here? And who lives there now? You're about to see, in some places, no one lives there. This is a legitimate coal mine and ghost town. Signs of abandonment appear everywhere. Well, here it is, at least what's left of it, Jewel Valley. This place was built in the 1930s, changed hands and ownership several times. I believe the last coal company to own it might have been Jewel Smokeless which is actually the coal company my papa worked for up until the early 1980s, somewhere around 1981 or 82. It's said the place was abandoned because of bad or contaminated water. We're up here in the deep boonies of Buchanan County, so who really knows? Most of these coal camps had a church and a camp store. Now, I didn't visit either of those today, but here you are what's left of a few houses. Now, I didn't get the creeps here, but when I did get out of the car to shoot pictures and set up video for that bust you saw back there, I did hear a very strange yet melodic whistling. Almost like a swing swinging, but more melodic. Is this place haunted? I don't know, you tell me. But not every place in Appalachia or Buchanan County, Virginia is a ghost town. In fact, the next place I stop is one of the last coal camps that was ever built and is actually still home to hundreds of people. Here we are. We're at Keene Mountain Coal Camp. They say this place was built in the late 1930s, so that would make it the last, if not one of the last, coal camps ever built in Appalachia. Now shortly after this place was built, a major accident or explosion happened and it killed several dozen people. Unfortunately, that's a tragic tale that's been told very often in these hills. This place has changed ownership over the years as a coal camp between, I don't know, Island Creek Coal Companies and Red Jacket Coal Company, which actually Red Jacket was the first coal company my own Paul had worked for for nearly 20 years before becoming a foreman at Jewel Smokeless. And there's a Red Jacket sign kind of paying tribute there to Red Jacket Coal Company. Now, I'm not gonna turn down any of these side streets. They're pretty tight and I respect folks' privacy. I just hate turning around in the driveways. But if you look down through here, some of these are two-story type buildings, probably built early, early on for management and then you've got your cookie cutter, single story, simple coal camp type buildings that would have been for everybody else. Now when we first pulled in this place, this building here on the left would have likely been the coal camp store. You've heard of coal mining stores, that's, that's it. Today it's a post office. But for a nearly 100 year old coal camp, this place is in great shape. And I think that's just because the people who still call it home take great pride in it. 
Not every town in Appalachia is a ghost town. I've said it once and I'll say it again. And as I move further into Buchanan County, signs of activity become clear. Until I make my way to Grundy. A place literally carved out of the mountain. Now I know many locals look at Grundy and what's been going on here in recent years and question whether or not is this really progress. I mean, come on, they have a three-story Walmart, a theater, quite a few local businesses, small shops. They even have a singing barber. If you don't believe me, go check him out on Facebook. But one thing that has plagued Grundy, like so many Appalachian holler communities, is flooding. It plagued McDowell in West Virginia, where I just was, and here they even had to move Grundy because the flooding was so bad at one point. And since then, the population has been in decline. But they have a law school, a school of pharmacy. Is this progress? Will this place one day look like Hell House Street? The choice is really theirs. <laughs>